Well, day three is done and dusted in the books at the Australian Junior League Championships, and we finally have our quarterfinal matchups. It really is going to get started tomorrow, but we have to finish the day of play today. Sam, another big day on Diamond 1. Yeah, massive day on Diamond 1. Some elimination games for some high pressure and some high quality baseball. Yeah, and that first game was exactly that. It was the Adelaide Waves and Swan Hills that were going at each other. The winner of this game would advance to the quarterfinals, and Swan Hills jumped on the Waves early and often en route to a massive win. Yeah, Dan Carter, absolutely phenomenal. All tournament, he hit a home run on an ABL size field. That's no mean feat here, Eric, but Carter wasn't stopped there. He didn't want to stop there. He finished with the first cycle at the 2017 Australian Junior League Championships. He's been hitting exceptionally well all week, and today was no exception. Yeah, an unbelievable tournament for Dan Carter. I think he was the player of the game in the game on uh, Monday as well, but it's not just him on this Swan Hills team. DJ Cook had a big one as well. He was five for five on the day, and you actually had the chance to catch up with him after the game. BJ Cook, congratulations. Five for five with four RBIs today. Must have felt pretty good up there at the plate. Oh yeah, I uh, felt pretty confident. Uh, yeah, pretty settled in. I had a, tough, <laughs> had a tough time at the plate in the first game, but felt pretty comfortable today and yesterday. What adjustments did you make from that first day to today's game where you went five for five? I uh, just shot my swing down, got my foot down earlier, yeah. What were the instructions from the coach? Obviously a tough loss on the first day against Hills. You bounced back with two wins there. What were the messages from the coaches after the first game? Um, you just said be aggressive, get after it, try and find a pitch you want and go hunting. Has it been good to play with a lot of these guys for a number of years and really build that camaraderie and that uh, belief up that you guys can do good things? Yeah, I mean, this team, we've been together for three, four years now. And yeah, we, we all gel pretty well together and have a good time. Well, BJ, congratulations on your game. Even bigger congratulations on making the quarterfinals. Well done, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. Game two had Cronulla, who had already booked their ticket into the second round. They had finished top in the tournament already, but they'd been dominant all tournament long. They hadn't allowed a run yet, and they had to go against Canberra today, who gave them a bit more of a fight than maybe some would have thought. Yeah, Canberra driving in two runs against Cronulla. The first runs that Cronulla have conceded all tournament. They're still in the box seat to go back to back, you would think but it's fantastic to see Canberra getting a couple of runs, but yeah, Cronulla's still looking very strong. One of the key players in this game was Luke Krakowski. He had a big game as well. He had a big triple that cleared the bases at one point as well too. You had a chance to catch up with him. Luke Krakowski, congratulations. A fantastic win to seal the number one seed in your pool against Canberra today. Talk us through that bases clearing triple there. I knew that I had to score the runs in and uh, got a pitch I could handle and I hit it as far as I could and cleared the bases with it. And talk to us about coming in as the defending champions this tournament. Did you feel any pressure? No, we're a bit confident coming in because, you know, we've done this before and getting the wins is good, you know, finishing first place in our pool, so. What has been the messages from the coaches this tournament? Obviously, you come in as defending champions with a lot of confidence. What were the messages from the coaches before the start of the tournament? Staying relaxed is key for us, you know, not getting too cocky where uh, we're not playing our best, but we're sticking, sticking to the low and uh, playing still good baseball, so. And uh, talk to us about the experiences at the World Series for you, obviously playing baseball on an international level. It must be pretty cool. It is, honestly. It's really cool playing on an international level, especially coming back here where we could do it again. And we had another do-or-die game in Game 3 on the Diamond here. The Ride Hawks, after a bit of a surprise loss yesterday, they needed to come out and they needed to beat Brisbane Metro and they needed to put up some runs to do it as well. And one of the main players here, Mitch Steer, he navigated the team to victory in this one. Yeah, he was excellent all day, Mitch Steer. You mentioned that tough loss yesterday to the Southern Mariners, losing with a game-ending double play. They really had to bounce back yesterday, and Mitch Steer was phenomenal. Yeah, and it was also Mitch Steer's birthday on it. He started on the mound. He had a couple, couple big strikeouts. He had a couple big hits, and Sam had a chance to talk to him after the game. Mitch Steer, congratulations. It was a wonderful 14-0 victory for you today to get your team into the semifinals. How did that feel? Uh, it felt great, especially coming back from a pretty bad game yesterday. And uh, what were the coaches' messages after that game yesterday? You really needed a bounce back today, and you did? Yeah, so coaches mostly throw strikes in the pitching because that's all we didn't do yesterday. Talk to me about the camaraderie of the team. Obviously, you guys have been together for a little bit, some newer guys, some older guys coming into the team. Tell me about the team camaraderie here. I think we're really tight pack, and I think, I think that our camaraderie is really what brings it together. And extra special for you today on your birthday to get your start, get a couple of good hits in there. So great job, and I think the boys got a bit of a special message for you. Yeah! 
And day three concluded with the Northern Metros playing the Gold Coast Pirates. And the Metros had already booked their ticket to the next round. So it was a really good tune-up match for them. Here's some of the highlights from the game. And that one breaks an absolute mile. And he sits him down looking to another strikeout for Demick. Well, that one is roped out into left field and two will score. Here's the pitch, and Stevenson cracks at the first pitch he sees, and this might split the gap. It's going to get there. It's going to be caught up by the center fielder. One run coming in to score. It's a 13-0 ball game. It's been a great performance from the Northern Metro so far, and it's a swing and a miss, and that's the ball game. They strike out the side. They put up 19, and they shut out the Gold Coast Pirates, and the Northern Metros have set themselves up real nicely for a showdown in the quarterfinals tomorrow morning. So that's what happened on Diamond 1, but let's take a look what happened on Diamond 2 in the ball games today. Yeah, Hills got over the Gold Coast Mariners in the first game today. It was Brock Tonner. He drove in five of Hills' ten runs in that game. An elimination game in the second game of the day on Diamond 2 saw the Adelaide Pirates, the hometown team, get over the Eastern Phantoms 14-3 to put their spot in the quarterfinal. Jack Kelly, he was incredible out there on Diamond 2. Seven RBI from his four hits from the day. So a great effort from Jack. The Central Firebirds and the Southern Mariners played the third game of the day out there on Diamond 2 and it was Will Sheriff, the starting pitcher for the Central Firebirds. Six and a third innings pitch, four hits, 11 strikeouts, the most we've seen all tournament and most importantly no earned runs which led his team to victory. And there were elimination games left, right and center all day uh, and didn't. that's how the game and the day ended off. It was Manly versus Eastern Athletics. Both of these teams needed a win to get to the next round and Manly ended up chopping the Eastern Athletics to punch their ticket to the quarterfinal. And now that the stage is set for a big day of quarterfinals tomorrow on Diamond One, all the game's gonna be on ABL TV, so no matter where you are, you can tune in. Sam, what are we looking at? The first quarterfinal on Diamond One, the Northern Metros from WA taking on the Victorian Southern Mariners baseball charter. The second game, see defending champions Cronulla match up with the West Australian powerhouses, the Swan Hills. Yeah, it's a big matchup. And then we're going to go right to Ride and Manly playing each other. That could be a very interesting one as well, too. Both teams playing some pretty tight games. We're going to conclude the day with Hills versus the hometown team, the Adelaide Pirates. So plenty of action to come. And we'll have four epic quarterfinals tomorrow. Eric, should be a wonderful day of action. Yeah, I can't wait. And I'll be, uh, I'll be on ABL TV, watching on ABL TV. That's the only place to catch all the action if you're not at the ballpark yourself. Yeah, you can tune in via the Baseball Live app. Don't forget to get involved at baseball.com.au and the Baseball Australia Facebook page to stay up with the live action. It's finals day tomorrow, Eric. Can't wait.